I'm back on my bullshit, man. So I wanted to film this really quick video with my fifth gen Camaro, Veronica. I just wanted to film a really quick one about the differences, pros and cons, what I like and don't like. You know, that corny stuff every YouTuber makes whenever they buy a new car. I got the little list on my uh, my trap phone right here. Uh, when you walk away from your fifth gen, it automatically locks. The sixth gen does not do that. So there are times when, like right now, when I walk into my house and then I come back, the car is locked, I don't have my key, I have to go back into the house to get the key. So right now, I'm locked out of my house, so I have to call my brother to let me back in the house. So let me go do that so I can finish this video. All right, so on to the interior. Obviously the interior from a fifth gen to a sixth gen is very different. There's no Apple CarPlay. Infotainment system is very dated. Radio, CD, and it has a CD player too. That's pretty cool. It also has an aux port down here. That's like where I connect my phone. So it has an aux and then a USB for your iPhone. This vehicle is a 2SS, so it does have heated and cooled seats. It has these dials here that, you know, shows you your battery life, uh, your oil life, oil temps, you know, stuff like that. So the only thing about the interior that I really don't like is the seat belts. And that's it, because my seat is pretty far up. I got long legs, but the seat belts are all the way back here. And then I'm not really too sure why Chevy did this, but they have this thing that's supposed to hold the seat belts in, and it's really only held in by this little magnetic clip. And you can see just by moving the seatbelt, it gets undone. So it's kind of a bad design on Chevy's part, but that's really like the most nitpicky thing I can find about this car, <laughs> like honestly. Um, also, the AC sucks. Like on hot days, I always drive Kuro when I had him because this car on a hot day the AC is pretty much non-existent. It does not do anything. So that's about it. The AC, the air conditioning is trash. And then the seat belts are just a little bit too far back and just bad design on Chevy's part with this whole seatbelt hook thing. So really, it's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty much fine with the car. The sound system is fine. It has Boston premium audio. I don't know. I mean, it sounds fine. Like it's granted, it's a 12 year old car. It was made in 2009. Like I can't. I can't complain about most of this stuff. It's just, you know, I'm glad they fixed it with the sixth gen because Kuro is super comfortable to drive. I'm very lucky that I get to have a 2SS and a 2LT. I got very lucky with both my cars and I couldn't ask for two better cars to have, honestly. So yeah, that's pretty much it with the interior. While I am still in the car, I did want to talk about some drivability stuff. I can't drive the car right now because I have a flat tire. Uh, my front driver's side is extremely flat. The, the tire is also no longer taking air. Anyway, so I can't drive the car, but let me at least tell you guys how the driving experience has been. So honestly, this car drives like a dream. I said that before. It's, it's amazing how this thing drives. The only thing that I've noticed, and I've seen a lot, even with six gen SS owners, is it has this uh, thing where it, the car will tell you to shift from first to fourth. Like, let's say I'm getting out of first gear and I'm going like 20 miles an hour. It'll, the car will like, I'll be in first and it'll like guide me over to fourth gear. It's the strangest thing. It's like I'm playing with an iRobot vehicle. You know what I'm saying? To counteract that, all you have to do is just rev out first gear. Like just get to about like 4,500 or 5,000 RPM and then the sign will, the alert will go off and then you can just easily go into second gear, third gear, fourth gear, you know, and you can like, as long as you rev out the car, <laughs> then you can counteract that. So it's pretty cool. And then obviously this car is a lot heavier than my 6.5 gen. Obviously the 6.2 V8 versus the two liter four cylinder. You know, I think Kuro, the six gen is about 32, 3,400 pounds. And I think this car sits right around like 3,600. So it's only like a 200 pound difference, but you do feel it, especially around the corners. This car does have a lot of body roll. That's one thing I have to fix before I start adding power to this car. This has an ex like an ex like a lot of body roll, probably because it's a 12 year old car. It has 100,000 miles on it. 
and then it's just very heavy. So one thing that I really wanna fix is the body roll. So just looking at my little list, the pros, so let's start off with the sound, obviously, LS3. 2010 Camaro. It sounds amazing. It's not even straight piped yet. It already sounds pretty good stock, but you can't really hear it outside the vehicle when you're driving. You really only hear it in the cabin, which is fine. So the power is insane stock, and I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when I modify it. And on to the third thing, which is modifications so this car is, has a ton of mods that you can do to it pro charger supercharger keep it na which is what i'm gonna do you can do everything headers off-road headers you can do catted headers with high flow cats x pipe h pipe all that stuff there's so many mods you can do to this car it's, it's amazing i already bought the full like all the exterior mods that i'm gonna do to this car i got a front lip i got side skirts i got a wing not a wing i got a i got a spoiler um I even got some side louvers, so stay tuned for that video. And it's obviously just a classic American muscle car. This thing, you can do like some heritage stripes. You can do some side stripes along the sides. This is a beautiful car. It, it's, it's great. And then it comes in these really funky colors like yellow. They got orange. Like it's called like orange inferno, something like that. It's nasty. You know, also another thing with drivability. So this car does not have a backup camera. There is no backup camera. So you got to learn how to get real good with the side mirrors. And visibility isn't really even an issue for me because I've been in and out of Camaros for the past four years. But like I said, there's no backup camera. So I have to get real good with using those. Honestly, it just makes me a better driver. So I can't really call that a con. But like for the average person buying this car who hasn't been in and out of Camaros, who's not experienced like myself, there's a learning curve to it, let's say that. I guess gas for how like expensive it is to maintain this car. Uh, gas in my area is at about $5 right now, like $5.10. So to fill up, it's about $90 for me. And then obviously maintenance and how expensive modifications are getting for cars in 2022. It's expensive if you wanna build this car, but you know, it's what I want to do, so I'm willing to spend that money. If you're looking to buy a 5th gen Camaro, just be weary of the things that I told you, like the bad AC, the visibility, the seat belt, the body roll, <laughs> like, I don't know, but all those things can be fixed. I like, I'm also really not big on complaining about my cars. I'm very grateful for what I have, so I can't really complain about it, but I'm just letting you guys know the issues that I've found with it so far. And that's pretty much all I got for you guys. So yeah. Um, let me know if you are a 5th gen owner or a 6th gen owner, how you feel about having your vehicle. And let me know any other stuff in the comments. If I missed anything, yeah, man, that's all I really got for you guys. Hope you guys have a great day. Peace out, guys.